Bishop Robert Barron shares two stories that shed light on the understanding of today's gospel parable. So the first story is about four sons who are living in this beautiful family estate. Well, tragically, a fire breaks out. The two younger sons are at home and they immediately begin battling the fire. They get on the phone, they call their two other brothers and they say, get home quickly. Our, our family estate is on fire. Well, the third son, he's at work and he says, I'll drop everything, I'll get there as soon as I can. He arrives about an hour into battling the fire and he takes up a hose and he also begins battling the fire. But the fourth brother, they call him and they find out he's out of town on business. And he says, look, I'll cancel my meetings this afternoon. I'll get in the car. I'll get home as soon as I can. He arrives four to five hours after the fire starts. When he gets there, the fire trucks are already there. The blaze is pretty much under control, but he chips in in that final few minutes to help quell the fire. <laughs> now the fire's out. What a relief. Can you imagine if those four brothers then standing around and the two younger ones say, you know what, I'm kind of upset about all this. I mean, we battled the fire all day and all of you are, are celebrating and taking credit for this. Are you kidding? <laughs> all four of the brothers would be overjoyed that the fire's out. It's not about who gets credit. See, mission, a shared mission, has a way of concentrating our mind. It focuses our attention on what really matters. It's not about who's getting credit. It's about that the fire is out, that our family home has been saved. Well, Bishop Aaron also shared a true story about his own childhood. He says, you know, normally we don't remember things from the time we're three years old, but he remembers a family gathering he went to when he was only three years old. They were all at his grandma's house, the whole family. And they're having family dinner. And he says, like some little kids, he decided to just kind of wander off. And he wandered off in the neighborhood. And throughout the festivity and the family gathering, people would say, hey, hey have you seen Bobby? And people would say, oh, I think he's around here somewhere. But after about an hour of Bobby being missing, people were finally like, hey, we haven't seen Bobby. And does anyone know where Bobby is? Panic sets in they realize he was missing. So the whole family goes out into the neighborhood searching for Bobby. Well, by God's grace, he walked by a home where there are two teenagers out playing, two teenage girls, and they saw Bobby, they recognized him, they knew he belonged to his grandma's house, so they picked him up and they carried him home. Well, the family sees Bobby coming with these two teenage girls and there was rejoicing. This son who was lost has been found. And he said they literally, like the lost prodigal son, they had a festivity. They rejoiced. They came home and had a celebration. And those two teenage girls were heroes. Now, he says, can you imagine if in the midst of the celebration, his parents were to stop and say, you know, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I, these two teenage girls are getting all the credit. And they found him at the last minute. I mean, we searched for him for a whole hour. What about all of us? We deserve the credit. He says, obviously that would be ludicrous. It's not about who gets credit. It's about that Bobby was found, that the child who was lost has been discovered. And so, so often we get caught up in pettiness about comparisons and who's getting credit. Mission has a way of focusing us. Well, what's the whole mission of the church? It's the salvation of souls. Are we upset when somebody's saved at the last hour of their life? Hallelujah! It's not about who gets credit or I deserve more because I've labored more. It's about every soul being saved. 1 Timothy 2.4 says, God desires that all people be saved and come to the fullness of the truth. Well, that's the mission of the church. And we thank God that he pursues us. Did you notice Jesus goes out five times inviting people into the vineyard to labor? Jesus never stops pursuing us, inviting us to labor in his kingdom. And now the choice is ours. We have to accept the invitation. I want to just draw four simple points out from this parable. Okay, we can hear this parable about 
the guy who works just an hour and receives the full daily wage. And we can start thinking, well, you know, this sounds pretty good. I mean, he got out of work most of the day and put in an hour at the end and he got the full daily wage, the fullness of salvation. Maybe I can put off working in God's vineyard and just, you know, come to the Lord at the end of my life. There's an episode of The Simpsons where Homer decides to skip church and stay home and watch the football game. And Lisa comes to him and challenges her dad. And this is what Homer says. Don't worry, honey. If you're right, daddy can convert on his deathbed. <laughs> okay, this can be our mentality. Oh, let's put off conversion, put off laboring in the Lord's vineyard. I can come in at the end. Remember the story in the Bible where the man says, well, let's eat, drink, and be merry. Let's put off putting, going to conversion. And what does God say? You fool. This night your life will be required of you. Putting off working in God's vineyard, putting off conversion is not something <laughs> that's smart. We know not the day nor the hour that God's going to call us. The second point. Laboring in God's vineyard is actually a good thing. How many of us, though, kind of approach our faith or our Christian life as a drudgery? Can you imagine, okay, I'm in my 22nd year of priesthood. If I were to approach my priesthood and say, yeah, you know, God called me to follow Jesus and to be a pastor and a priest, and oh, woe is me, but you know, nose to the grindstone, take up my cross, follow Jesus. Sometimes we think of working in God's vineyard as a perpetual Lent, when in actuality, laboring in God's vineyard brings meaning and purpose and peace and joy to our lives. It's actually the people standing idle with nothing to do who are miserable. People who are unemployed understand this. They know the anxieties of what's my future gonna be? How am I gonna provide for my family? Like being at work in God's vineyard that's actually a joy, not something we want to put off or delay in our lives. It's the source of our whole meaning and purpose. Okay, third point. Here's a spiritual danger. That when we do labor in God's vineyard, we start to get this attitude, well, you know, God, God kind of owes me now. I mean, I've given 20, 30, 40, 80 years of my life to the church and being a part of the church and laboring in God's vineyard. Now I'm kind of deserving of all this. That's always a, a spiritual pitfall when we start to think that somehow we deserve salvation or that we can earn it through our own works. It's all a gift. It's all a gift. Finally, Final point, spiritual pitfall to avoid. Father Hockey says this, anytime we compare ourselves to others, that's a pitfall. The spirit of comparison is always a bad spirit. Well, I've done so much more than this person. I'm better than them. I deserve more than them. Look, again, mission focuses our mind, focuses our whole lives and intention on what really matters. What matters is the fire's out, that Bobby's been found, that souls are being saved. It's not about comparing ourselves or feeling like I deserve more than somebody else. That's all where the devil wants us to focus. Praise God when someone turns to the Lord in their final hour and receives the fullness of salvation. The mission is being accomplished, the salvation of souls. What a blessing to have a heavenly father who is so generous and bountiful, who never sees inviting us, who comes in search of us, and who gives us every chance to experience the fullness of his grace.